Hi everyone, welcome to this reading. I'm a crystal ball off to the side, so I will be scrying throughout this message. If you're new to my channel, my readings are a little different, and if you're returning, welcome back. You know how we do. If it doesn't resonate with you, if you're forcing the story to fit or arguing with it in any way, just leave it behind for the people who it's meant for. So channel members, you will have um, a channel membership collective reading posted midweek, so definitely check back for that. It'll probably be about Wednesday, Thursday, so check back for that. Uh, if you are part of the Magicians tier, we are doing our live at 7.30 p.m eastern standard time on tuesday uh if you are interested in the 22 major arcana series that's coming up that will start next week so check back for that and i think that's it <laughs> that's it so um let's go ahead and get started so when i opened up to channel uh, messages early this morning one of the things that they showed me was they showed me a child going down a slide and the focus wasn't necessarily on the child or the slide though that may certainly come up later we'll see uh, it was really the focus on the stomach area uh, there's like butterflies that you have as you're going down something quickly, um, that emptiness that we feel within the solar plexus. So that told me that this reading is about something about personal power. Um, also when you're on a slide as a child, if you're going particularly fast like this child was, uh, there's a sense of a loss of control. So someone is feeling a little bit of a loss of control over their 3D uh, and over their personal power. And this may not mean that something's happening. So it's not going to be that there's a tower moment happening for everyone. It may just mean that we feel like we can't get our proverbial shit together right um they then drew me to this image of ghosts on this box that i have and uh this really wasn't about ghosts of the past or anything like that though it certainly can be for somebody uh there's a little bit more to that and so um with the combination of the solar plexus and the ghosts it really says that this message is going to be for someone who knows that they operate in their higher chakras uh and that they are realizing or have realized that the process of their self-actualization, in other words, their efficacy in the world, um, requires them to either work on their solar plexus or work on their 3D. So this is basically just a message of confirmation for someone that yes, this is the right track for you at this time. Uh, they gave me some uh, symbols. These are very <laughs> eclectic symbols um, this time. So I'll start off with the more mundane ones. Um, a thistle flower, a squirrel, a beetle, an aspen leaf. The time, 1234, or the numbers 123, but it was very specifically, I saw a clock that said 1234. And this is where we get a little um, <laughs> over in a different arena here. Um, Heru Raha, or uh, if you are more into Budge, I think it was, oh no, it wasn't Budge, but mm, I don't remember who wrote it this way. It was Heru Pa Kahart. That might be the actual spelling. And then uh, if you're a Thelemite, it was Rahur Kuhuit. So uh, those are the symbols. <laughs> There's also real fast as I'm putting that away, uh, the image of one of those Southeast Asian fishing boats is coming to mind also. So I'm going to put that out there for whoever that's for. Okay, so these are the cards that they had me pull. And um, the first card that comes out is the Hermit. Now, I don't know that I'm really going to be I might read the actual cards. So with the Hermit, what we're talking about is an ascetic, right? This is a person who takes themselves out of the 3D, out of the world, in order to focus on their philosophies or their spirituality or on themselves. And so this may not necessarily be a reading where someone has been exceptionally spiritual, because believe it or not, you don't have to be a spiritual person to be in your higher uh, chakras. You have to be very cerebral and um, very in your head and focused on those things. So um, with this there is this sense of this woman who's looking off in the distance. She's not actually looking at that ball of light. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I want to lighten this a little bit. She's actually looking over the light. So this is where we've overlooked our solar plexus. We've overlooked that sort of uh, solar energy within ourselves. The importance of the solar plexus, a lot of people misconstrue it and they think that, oh, if you're focused on the solar plexus, you're really egoic. And that's not the case at all. Um, that's that's a, a, either a block or too much solar plexus energy. A healthy solar plexus is very focused on what do I want? What do I want to do? What am I going to do about this? How do I plan for this, right? How do I show up in the world? And um, unfortunately for a lot of us spiritual people, the solar plexus energy shrinks a little bit or it gets too big depending on um, how, how large our third eye is, for example. Um, Mm, okay, there's a lot to that. Uh, chakras are a lot more complicated than I think people really understand that they are. <laughs> there's a lot going on there. Um, 
So with this energy here, um, this is vital for us to be effective in our world, to be effective in our life. Uh, you guys hear me talk a lot about bringing the um, cosmic energies down uh, as we go through the different phases of our healing cycle, of our spiritual development. Uh, we'll spend a time being in the lessons of each chakra on a cosmic level. And it's important to find a way to ground that energy down into the solar plexus. Um, I feel that for many of you who are going to resonate with this message of being in a space where you understand that this is something that needs to take place for you. You've already been through the lessons of the heart. You're probably um, either dealing with or have already dealt with uh, trying to establish better boundaries for yourself. You've already come into a space where you understand that that's something that needs to happen, of uh, not having that overly open heart space that just wants to love everything, <laughs> even the um, person that really wants to hurt you, um, in that open sort of, I'm going to continue to give to you and enable you to continue hurting me sort of way, right? Uh, we've already been through that, whoever this message is for. And now we're coming into a space where we've, we've gone through the lessons of boundaries. We might still be working on them, but we're, understand but we're understanding that um, we do have to actually ground ourselves into this energy and be effective in our lives. So one of the interesting things about this card is that she's showing up in a desert, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, that sense of emptiness, right? Nothing grows there. Um, but what's growing there is this little sad desert tree. And um, when we have trees symbology, this really represents the axis mundi. It represents our life. It represents our higher self in the branches, our lower self in the roots, and our middle self in the trunk. And um, this trunk here is bent. Let's see. So there's something here about our middle self, our, our middle world here, uh, that maybe is growing in an askew way, or isn't necessarily as solid as we would like it to be. Um, <clears throat> the card that they had me pull out next was the Five of Voices. When we talk about the Five of Swords, uh, this is really an energy where um, this is almost speaking to me about that past energy and how it carries into the present. So when we talk about spiritual people, uh, if a person was spiritual most of their life, chances are they had a very traumatic childhood. Um, you know, that's not always the case, but that does tend to be a pattern that happens. And that's because in order to become an extremely spiritual person, most people have gone through a traumatic event and it really takes them out of their desire to connect deeply with the 3D and find solace in something else um, or get interested in something else. And uh, again, that's not always the case, but that does tend to be a pattern. So that's a pattern I'm going to be speaking about here with this card. Um, the Five of Swords really reflects that. The Five of Swords, if you're familiar with the regular tarot, um, it is the man who's holding a sword who has just beat his two friends in battle and he's gloating about it while they're actually very sad. Uh, this represents an event where um, there's been some injustice, uh, usually from someone else that was very wounded, and this is something that has residual effects. It's like an echo that carries through our timeline, right? Uh, and what we see here is we see that this individual here, they have mirror of mirrors, right? They have um, opposite reflections. And this is another thing that comes in when we get into the solar plexus energy, we start to understand the reflection that's outside of us. Uh, what we have here is we have this hand trying to push this person's face away. So it's almost like a wiping away of the identity or trying to put the identity aside um, to focus on this here. And this really represents to me this sen sense of divinity as a temptation, right? That um, what you want is up here. And meanwhile, people focus on that and they don't focus on their 3D and they're not happy with their lives. And so that causes them just like this toxic cycle, it causes them to more fully immerse in their spiritual world because they can't handle their 3D anymore. And um, this is not a way that we want to live as people, right? We want to be effective people that are happy with our lives and happy with what we've created here. Um, with this right eye, the right eye projects. And the energy that is projecting is this red energy. This red energy has this murder of crows, um, a very ominous, ominous image or a very beautiful image, if you like that sort of thing. Um, and what this is really showing is that uh, we have projected some survival uh, element onto the world around us. So um, really thinking that I'm at the mercy of these circumstances or I'm at the mercy of this or that. And obviously there are situations where that's applicable, but by and large, people would be very surprised once they do sink into that solar plexus energy, um, how often they're going to 
honestly, it's like waking up one day and realizing that, wow, I wasn't at the mercy of anything. I was the one standing in my own way the whole time because of the things I thought <laughs> I was at the mercy to. And um, that's really an energy that somebody may be waking up to right now is understanding that, uh, you know, if somebody comes along and asks you, and this is actually a legit question someone asked me, someone comes along and asks you, well, why aren't you rich? You know, the first inclination is to be like, well, you know, well, and then you realize all your answers kind of fall short. You know, that the only person that's actually standing in your way is you. So that's something that somebody here is realizing. Now, when we have this realization and when we come to the realization that we have to focus on our 3D and we have to work on our foundation, right? Um, that maybe we have cast a survival uh, mechanism or survival projection onto the world around us, we start to understand that um, things are starting to happen and unfold in a different way. It, sometimes things just take that acceptance and that realization in order to change the energy. Someone here, this is like almost throwing Wheel of Fortune vibes at me. It's like you were supposed to notice this at the time that you did. It is a divine event that is happening in divine time. And um, this is really causing this beautiful unfolding and it is coming after this lovely rose energy from the heart we've unfolded something within our heart space um, <clears throat> and this heart space is now allowing that energy to sink down into the solar plexus it's on the backdrop of the solar plexus so now we're understanding that a, a bigger step towards self-love is to have self-care and self-care extends beyond having a bubble bath with a glass of wine <laughs> it goes into what is the environment that i'm creating for myself what are the opportunities that I'm providing myself? Um, what are the things that I need to do to take care of myself that I'm not doing, right? And understanding that those things are all being reflected to you by the behaviors of people around you or by the behaviors of the universe around you. The events that are occurring within your life reflect greatly the way that you're treating yourself. Someone here is realizing that. I love when this card comes up. So this is a six of materials. When we have traditional rider weight, uh, the six of pentacles, which is what this card is, it is the noble man who is um, giving money to the poor and he's doling out money. This is where we're being helped in some way. It's almost like a leg up. Uh, sometimes when we have these realizations and we have these little energy changes that we make, that really spurs on healing in other areas of our life. And that's what I'm seeing happen here. We've taken care of something within our heart space, maybe gotten on our self-care journey or our self-love journey. And um, on that self-love journey, what we're doing is we're putting one foot in front of the other and it's leading us down this path into the other lower chakras where we're understanding I have to focus here or I have to focus here and um, we're giving more energy to the places where we need to give energy in order to really thrive so when we have the queen of voices which is the final card that they had me pull um, it all seems to be leading to this so while this is the queen of swords and everyone has a negative connotation for the queen of swords she's actually my favorite queen <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit in depth here. So uh, when we have this Queen of Swords, she's somebody who masters her mind. She's not so immersed in her mind like the King of Swords is. Uh, she's much more balanced than him. And in that way, she has the ability to rule a kingdom. The lore about the Queen of Swords is that her husband is off at battle or in some cases has died in battle. And she's left on the throne to uh, hear the people's complaints, to greet foreign uh, lords. She's effectively ruling the kingdom in his stead. And she's the only queen in the tarot that's doing this. Uh, she has one hand extended, so she still maintains her compassion, her humanity. Um, but she has a sword out because her boundaries are like ironclad. Uh, you can't get anything over on the Queen of Swords. So this is really the energy that we're being brought into, where we have the power to maintain maintain our compassion from this energy of the heart space that we've recently been working on. Um, but because we are engaged in our solar plexus, we're fit to rule our kingdom. And we're fit to rule our kingdom with ironclad boundaries, understanding that anything less than that will allow people to take from us or will allow you know things that we don't want them to take, for example, um, or will allow us to kind of be lax on our on ourselves so that we're no longer fit to rule that kingdom. This is where we really sharpen the mind. Uh, one of the elements behind being so immersed inside of spirituality that we run really, really, we use it as a coping mechanism or we use it as a crush, 
crutch to not really face our lives and create what we want and do the hard work within our 3D. Um, one of the things that's behind that is a very busy mind, a very cluttered mind. And um, when we get into this solar plexus energy, it really challenges us to be present. The Queen of Swords is so present that she's not like the King of Swords who rushed off into battle because he didn't really think things through because he's just, he is very logical. He's extremely logical, but he doesn't consider the other avenues of things. The Queen of Swords considers all angles. She's somebody that, um, you know, in some ways it's the suit where she is a lot more balanced than the king of the suit. Actually, I think that the queens tend to be, but just personal opinion, don't shoot me. Um, but there, there is this energy with the Queen of Swords that she's she understands not only how to be extremely logical and how to strategize and plan things, uh, but she also still maintains that ability to communicate with spirit, um, both of the underworld, of the upper world. Um, she has a bigger depth of knowledge of who she is. And this is what um, someone's guide, someone's guidance, someone's angels, whatever the case may be, your ancestors seem to be trying to bring you into. You're, go you're on a new journey. And we see that first and foremost with this hermit card, those footsteps going off into the desert towards that sun. You're on a very new journey here. And um, for some people within the spiritual community, I know that there's a lot of guilt when they stop focusing on spiritual things to attend to their 3D. And there's really nothing to feel guilty about. You know, um, when we do that, what we've done is we've taken the spiritual and we've taken the 3D and we've separated them. This is, you know, this is known as dualism. And uh, when we do that, we really do miss a lot of lessons that we need that are required by the integration of the two things together. Something that is happening collectively at this time is people are starting to realize that their mundane world is exceptionally spiritual. And so you may be finding that that's something that you've come to recently, a realization that you've come to recently. And this is where you start to ground down those spiritual ideas and find the spiritual in the mundane. And um, once we do that, we're ready for the rest of the journey. So um, whoever this message is for, I love this energy. I love this energy. I wish you the best of luck in this and uh, if this resonates for you please hit that like button feel free to leave me a comment and until next time